Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Since I made that aiming tutorial, I was asked to follow it up by showing you guys how to host games. Chances are, if you've tried to host a game in MGO2, you've been given this error, you cannot create a game under the current network environment. That means that your network doesn't have the appropriate ports open to be able to host a game. The process to be able to do this can be a bit daunting because there are a lot of factors that can be different here. Hopefully with this video, the process can be made a bit more simpler to understand. First things first, you should know that if this becomes difficult at any point, you can call your internet service provider for help. Calling your ISP can be another way to set this all up and they can just do it for you. Just keep in mind that if you do not have a static IP, you may need to call them every time you want to host if your IP keeps changing. Now let's try and get you ready to host games. The process we're going to be doing is called port forwarding, which to keep it basic is what allows applications and services to access your network and send data. Some apps specifically require access to specific ports, which is indicated by a number. For MGO's case, the ports that we're going to be using tend to not be used by almost anything else. So the only thing we're going to be opening this up to is for MGO and nothing else. The process will work for both PC and PS3, so please follow along with these steps. To start, we will need to find your default gateway. This is the main number associated with your network. On PC, you would just need to go to the search bar and type in command prompt, and once you open that, this window should appear. All you have to do then is type in the command ipconfig and hit enter, and you will then get the following information. The important things that we're looking for here are default gateway and the IPv4 address, if you wish to host on PC. If you want to host on PS3, you still need the default gateway here, but you would need to go to your PS3 and go to system settings and then system information and get the IP address shown there. This would be the equivalent to the IPv4 address as seen here. If for whatever reason you do not have a PC to be able to find your default gateway, you should be able to find it using your phone by going to Google and searching how to find default gateway followed by your phone brand of choice. If you have the default gateway and your IPv4 address saved, the next thing to do is to use the default gateway number to get to your router or modem's control panel. You can get to it by just typing the default gateway number on your web browser. Once you enter that, it will bring you to a login screen. And here's where you're going to have to do some research for yourself. If you've never seen this page before, chances are you still have the default login for this page. All you would need to do is Google the default login for whatever brand of router that you, or modem that you happen to have. If all else fails, you can always contact your ISP to help you. But this part will always be different depending on what device you have for your internet. Once you log in, you may also need to search where the port forward settings are for your device, if it's not matching mine anyway. For me, I have to just go to firewall and then virtual servers when port forwarding. And this is where we're going to be using the rest of the information that we found. You're going to click add and then the description can be whatever you want. The inbound and local ports are going to be the same number for all of them, which is 5730. And the format is going to be set to UDP. The private IP address is going to be the IPv4 address you got in the command prompt, or the IP addresses that were in the PS3 system information depending on which one you're hosting from. If you want to do it for both, you just have to do this entire setup again for each individual one. And that's it. If you did all that and saved it, you should be able to host games now. If you were already logged on to MGO before this, you need to log out and then log back in again. If for whatever reason this still does not work, you may either need to revisit all these steps or talk to your internet service provider again to see if they can help set it up for you or if they're blocking it for whatever reason. Now, for those of you that are able to host fine, I want to talk a bit about hosting etiquette so that you can make the most out of the games that you're hosting. The first thing I want to mention when it comes to hosting is that the game has a network limit of about 512 kilobits per second as the maximum amount that you could have. There is a setting to lower it to 256, but if you're hosting, I would suggest keep it to the maximum, please. So just keep that in mind whenever you're hosting games. 
that just because you have really good internet doesn't mean that you're going to have an insane experience hosting games on MGO. Now, when hosting, if you want people to actually join your games, you need to be in the Save MGO Discord and join the community there. I'll be sure to leave a link in the pinned comment below. From there, you want to send out an ad notification to the MGO2 group and let them know what game it is. If it's variety, a specific game mode, or specific rules. This doesn't guarantee that people will always join, however. This community is unfortunately pretty small, so depending on the day, you may not get instant activity. I hope you can help me and the rest of the community, though, in hosting good rooms for people to come in and enjoy the game. Well, alright then, so what should you host? The settings for hosting games are pretty diverse, as in there's a lot of options for enabling and disabling things like guns, kill feed, as well as people's names when you aim at them, uh, unique characters, friendly fire, and even auto aim. You have 15 slots for any of the maps and modes you want to set, as well as being able to set the time limit and scores for each specific mode. No matter what mode you pick though, I would recommend to stick to the default time limits usually, Unless it's a one life game mode, in which case, one to two minutes less than default is usually really good, as well as four to six rounds max. If the game mode is not one life, then two rounds and default time limit is usually the, the usual for those, with the maximum amount of tickets if it's team deathmatch. The general rule for hosted games is that any rules in the description has to be honored whether it's not using specific skills or community rules like not touching the target unless it's one minute remaining or you're the last one alive. There is one more option I didn't cover and that's dedicated hosts, which lets you host a lobby without you technically being in it. All you can do is spectate though, but you won't take up a slot either. You can't choose to suddenly join the game whenever you want though, you need to be able to join on a different account on a different system. If you choose to not be a dedicated host, you can play or spectate as normal. You would just take up a slot whenever you're doing so. That covers all the settings. Now all that's left to talk about is how to moderate. The tools available to host to moderate games aren't exactly super reliable because the game runs on a voting system for everything. And that includes kicking players. So that's usually not the main way you can moderate your lobbies. One option you do have that is pretty reliable is the block function. In the start menu, you can add people as friends or block them. Blocking them prevents them from being able to join your rooms entirely. And this applies to all characters on their account. It goes without saying, but try not to abuse this, all right? The way I tend to do it is I block people for about a week and then clear it out unless they're a repeat offender. If the person in your lobby is really acting up, especially in the text chat, try and take pictures and submit a ticket to the moderation team on Discord. It's up to us to make sure that this game and community is a good experience for everyone to join in and have fun. So hopefully my instructions help some of you. I hope to see even more of you decide to give the game a shot. I hope to see more games hosted, even if it's just to get some private games going for you and your friends to test out the game. And let me know what other things you want me to help cover. Anyway, that's all from me. Please be sure to like and share the video if you really liked it, and subscribe if you want more videos like this. Until next time, I'll see you guys on the battlefield.